Hey there. I was just cleaning up some delicious popcorn. I got so excited while watching Nassim Harami demonstrate that all particles at the smallest level we know of function like tiny Toroto fields with tiny singularities in each one. I got so excited that I threw popcorn everywhere. You see, it's so exciting because with that understanding, we actually begin to open up our understanding of what a singularity really is. We expand our ideas about it and our observation and awareness and thus our ability to affect it. We're used to dealing with a lot of density instead of what things really are, empty space. The world we live in is mostly empty space. It's really light and fluffy, like popcorn. <laughs> I know, it doesn't seem that way to our senses. And that's why sometimes when we talk about this stuff, it seems a little out there. The information doesn't seem dense enough, but what we think of as dense isn't even close to the vacuum. <laughs> Oh, A kindred spirit messaged me on the interwebs recently and asked me how come I thought the vacuum cleaner model of a black hole wasn't fitting. I responded very simply, where's the motor? Where's the cleaner bag? The filter? The power source? How does it work? I get the analogy. It's a vacuum cleaner because it sucks things up, right? Got it. So what about the center of the galaxy, which is not only absorbing light, but also radiating it. Is that like the light on the top or something? For that matter, why don't we use the analogy of a whirlpool or a hurricane instead of a vacuum cleaner? Especially since with the whirlpool, the surface of the water from above appears flat. And much like our diagrams with whirlpools and water, the energy going into the vortex is going somewhere. Where? A space of greater density. Because at the bottom of the whirlpool, it's all really heavy because there's the weight of the water compressing on top of it. I mean, isn't that the perfect model for the black hole? Why are we getting stuck on a vacuum cleaner? Nassim's work describes the structure of the vacuum, a sacred geometric prism, which is an incredible, if not perfect representation of the structure of reality. All of the elements, all of the atoms, and even the stars follow a basic set of principal patterns, which are mapped out like this. The idea is that the vacuum of space itself is dividing in very specific ways and relationships. The cube octahedron is one of the fundamental shapes which fractals out. Its opposite is the star tetrahedron, the inward and the outward flow of energy from the center. When we begin to look at the relationship between the data points in the vacuum, we see that they equate the phi ratio over and over and over. This is the pattern we come up with, which Nassim has called the 64 tetrahedron grid. Were you to put a sphere around every point, they would create a perfect three-dimensional flower of life. This is basically a three-dimensional Metatron's cube, a structure by which all known structures can be found. The pattern can continually fractal larger and smaller to create complex geometries and structures, such as molecules or organ systems in our bodies, which are made up based on the variety of different patterns all found within the shape. If this structure is the male component, then the female component would be the toroidal flow between and around all of the points. Imagine that every sphere in and of itself is a torus, each with a singularity of its own, but the larger fractal is a larger sphere, also with a singularity, of which all of the other toroids are connected to. You can see this geometry really clearly in the brain. You have the entire field, which is a network of interconnected data. Then you have the corpus callosum, which acts like an accretion disk of a galaxy. And then the pineal gland right in the center, which is the connector and the singularity for the entire network and field that is your brain. This structure also breaks down our construct of time because of the nature of the singularity. The singularity is the infinite vacuum, a space that may or may not be very strong, but has a relationship to all of the singularities around it, all of the empty space. By the fact that they are connected through their singularity, energy and information can pass through the center and translate to anywhere else on the grid if there's a passage to it. Much like the idea of folding a piece of paper to create a wormhole, when the singular connection is made between two points, now the entire distance can be traveled instantly. This is demonstrated scientifically when we see that subatomic particles can be in two places at the same time, or break the laws of physics when it comes to time and order, almost as if some particles are moving backwards in time. Seriously, time-traveling subatomic particles are real. Sources in the comments. So this is really, really cool. So cool, in fact, that I have to save the meat of it for another video dedicated entirely to the subject. But did you know that time slows down the closer you get to a singularity? In a singularity, time actually begins to converge on itself. Later becomes now, and now becomes later. But like I said, we'll get into that at a different time. Through the singularity, the two spaces, the very big and the very small, are completely interconnected. 
They're inside each other, might be another way to say it. Nassim even suggests that the entire egg in which our universe exists inside is actually a much larger black hole, a super massive black hole. How amazing is that? The singularity is the key to unlocking and understanding that. Looking at the geometry, we can see and begin to understand how it works. So let's take that idea and fractal it out a bit. You may or may not know about the I Ching, one of the oldest texts that we know of today. The text is said to describe the laws of nature through the union of polarities. It is a diagram consisting of 64 hexagrams, which represent vibrations of balance in between the yin and the yang, negative and positive energy. By taking those 64 hexagrams and putting them together, the collective number of the long lines and broken lines, when you put them together, can be constructed perfectly to create the 64 tetrahedron grid exactly. Not a single stone out of place. They fit together as if to say, yes, this is in fact the structure of the vacuum of space, the blueprints of the universe. Check out Black Hole if you want to learn more. You can find links in the comments, or you can watch it right here.